Welcome to the podcast, Fee Weatherhood. Thank you for being here with us. Um, we have invited Fee to come and speak to me and Adam because Fee does amazing work um, in the Akashic Records and we had an incredible soul awakening session. Um, we realised it was two years ago now. Yeah. It doesn't feel like two years ago. Yeah, October 2020. Yeah. Wow. That was my one. Yeah, yours was just before that. Yeah, mine was August. And it was so powerful for us individually and our relationship Mm. that I got the guidance that we should get Fee on the podcast So, um, and to talk about it and share it with you guys. So Fee, please let us know about the amazing work you do. Um, We would love to know more about it. And you can tell us a bit about your story and and how you got into it. Well... (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for having me on to talk about this. Um, it's one of my favourite subjects, so you know yes. I could talk about it for hours. Awesome. Um, my husband always says that I'm like a deer in the headlights when someone asks me what I do because I have a lot of different things that I do, so I never really know how to describe myself. Yeah. But I'll give it a go. So a lot of the work that I do that you know is related to the Akashic Records. Yeah. And the Akashic records is a place that I love to work it's a place where you can go to find information and guidance for Mm. people and for yourself if you're familiar with that place Um, but it's a big part of my work so I help people really to understand themselves more clearly so that they can become more self-empowered really I guess if you wanted to put give me a title I guess it's a self-empowerment coach in in that respect but I do that work through the Akashic Records Uh, I also soul coach so generally when people have been um, they've had an initial session with me I offer also coaching as an ongoing way to continue their self-empowerment journey uh, I also run women's retreats and, oh, you know, and I work in, as an intuitive. So doing many different things. So, yes, that's basically that. uh, what I do. But uh, with the Akashic Records work, it's a soul awakening session. It's my creation that I created, oh, I guess, about eight or nine years ago now. And um, it's designed to give you a deeper understanding of yourself. Mm. But alongside that, as sort of follow-up sessions you can have, I also offer relationship readings um, that help people in relationships. So you can use those sessions for any type of relationship that you're in. It doesn't have to be a marriage. It can be parent and child or siblings. Uh, They work very well in helping you to understand the people that you're in relationship with as you guys are familiar with yeah Uh, and I've also used those uh have a a few clients that love to explore past life experiences that they've had with other people in this incarnation to understand the experiences that they're having with them now so you can actually use those uh those sessions for a multitude of different things but the focus is really on working on something that can sound or feel a bit weird and wonderful uh, and bringing it into a practical way of understanding yourself so that you can actually use that information to grow and evolve so I think one of my gifts with that work is to actually bring that information through in a very practical way yes yeah Yeah. and that is a I love that I everything you were saying I was just nodding 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 because yeah So we could relate so much to everything that you shared. It helped me have a deeper understanding of myself. I kind of describe it to people as like permission to be yourself because it's like you've got this reading from your inside that says, this is who I am, you know, this this is who my soul is. You might not think that's the way I'm meant to be or that's who I am, but this, this is this is showing you that this is who I am. And I know we had that experience because um, I know for the soul awakening session was just incredible. And knowing that you do relationship sessions, I can just imagine how powerful they would be because you're going a bit more specific for the, you know, like you said, for the individual intention. Um, But just the soul awakening session for us was incredible because one of the gifts that my soul has that come that came through was my um 
importance of sharing my truth and expressing my truth and that it's it's and being able to communicate that is just like it it's like oxygen it's, it's like oxygen for my soul <laughs> and this is where we were having a lot of trouble in the beginning in our relationship because you know Adam wasn't as open to the path like you said some people can see it as very weird and wonderful and you know woo woo um but this is where I like to like you say that it's where the woo meets the work like they actually work together um everything that we learn in our soul awakening session we would then apply in our real life um and that was really powerful for us yeah. it you know first it it meant I started to listen to myself more <laughs> You know, I stopped needing the validation from other people. I actually realized I need to listen to myself. I need to listen to myself. I need to hear myself. I need to give myself permission to express myself. And the strangest thing happened when I started to do that, I no longer craved it from Adam so much because I, you know, received it from myself. And then ironically, he then was, it found it easier to actually receive me needing to share my truth and communicate. It was this beautiful um, journey that we went on and it just, I felt like I no longer had to fight to be heard and, you know, and demand to be heard, which was really so healing for my soul. Mm. Um, and through that, Adam realised, you know, with the permission in his soul awakening session that mm. he actually values communication. Yeah. And, I, and I he's here for a, communication. I which, had a wounding around that. From past yes. past experiences in this lifetime yeah. and maybe other lifetimes, but I and definitely felt like my my ideas weren't valued. I didn't have good knowledge to share or good information to share. And um, you know, that that old saying that you hear well, that I heard as a child, which is kids are seen, not heard. And there was very much that tone in my family of just be quiet and just do what you do as a kid. Just li just listen. And so getting confirmation that that was one of my gifts was really powerful for me to to start communicating more and, and sharing my truth. And it also and brought up that wounding, didn't it? Because part of your Adam's soul wounding was that, that he um, often overthought mm. or doubted his way of thinking. Yeah. And I, being able to see that from, from the inside, I was able to have more empathy and compassion mm. for that. Mm. Whereas from the outside, when I was looking from the outside, I was just like thinking, you know, what, what's going on? Like, just make a decision or just, you know, I, I couldn't understand why he couldn't make decisions or just do the thing that he said he was going to do or or trust himself. You know, here's me like obsessed with truth. <laughs> I'm like, just trust yourself. And that came up in my soul awakening session as well, that I have this, and I loved receiving this back, that I have this <laughs> innate ability to just know things. And I don't know why. And I'm okay with that. But they used to make Adam really uncomfortable. He'd be like, what do you mean that's what we should do? How do you know that? And I'm like, I don't know. I just do know. And I could be full conviction trusting that. And he was very logical thinking, yeah. she's lost her mind. She's crazy. What is she? <laughs> oh, she's completely like egotistical. She's totally up herself. Why, yeah. why does she think she knows that? But he's learned now to actually see that as my intuition, not mm. my ego. Yeah. Like in the past, he would actually think, yeah, she's just being really egoic. She just wants everyone to listen to her or do it her way. And that was never my intention at all. But I, I found it very hard to explain it because as my soul awakening session showed, I didn't know where it was coming from or why I just knew it. Mm. Um, so it's helped me trust that even more, which has helped me not only in our relationship, but also in my coaching, when I work with women, just trusting whatever needs to come through to be channeled through and just, and trust it. Mm. Um, so it's been so powerful. I mean, there, so is, yeah. there has been so many, that's the ones that I can think of straight away that we were reflecting on, but there's been heaps from it the Soul Awakening session. I think I'll just mention just one other big one for me was um, not thinking that I was a spiritual person or not that I, I didn't have any interest in that. I just thought it was, you know, I don't yeah. know the words for it, I but just, just not real. Yeah. You I didn't have any basis in science or, you know, you couldn't describe why it was, you know, why certain things were the way they were. Mm. And I didn't believe in any of that stuff. And then open, opening myself up and realising that um, I was actually one of my gifts is that I'm a natural spiritual teacher. Yeah. 
you know, that was a bit of a, a wow moment for me, realizing that, wow, I do have that ability and those feelings and thoughts that I get, I need to trust them more mm. and not dismiss them just because I don't have science to back it up or some knowledge to back it up. Yeah. You know, I need to trust that. And that was beautiful for me because I've always seen that in Adam, that, you know, he, Adam has green eyes, which is quite unusual. And a lot of people who have, who are very intuitive have green eyes. Like, you know, and from the moment I met him, we were only 14 and 15 when we met, but I knew there was something more to him than he was showing. Um, and I did struggle with that in our relationship sometimes. Am I just trying to see potential because I want there to be potential? Learning how to trust that. But I did know it was there. Um and I think your Soul Awakening session showed as well that Adam is actually happy with change. And Adam has done so mm. many different jobs. He's done so many different things. He values variety yeah. more than any other human being I think I've ever oh. met. You can pick them up. You okay. Miss Willow's here with us. <laughs> She's actually pulling some cards. How hilarious. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> She's found my... Um, my the energy ones, the this Oracle Seven energies, and she's pulling cards. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but yeah, so when we um, when that came up in this, in the Soul Awakening session, that he had been resisting that part of himself, yeah. you know, because society tells us you should have one job and do that forever, and if you don't, you're not stable, you're not going to do well in life, yeah. you know. At, and I had never tried to change that in Adam. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd found it a little bit frustrating. I'd be lying if I didn't say I found it a yeah. bit frustrating um, because I, my soul likes change and I'm, I have a positive relationship with it, which was great. And I could see how that worked. But I get that itchy feeling for change. I feel the feelings and then I make the decision and I do the thing. So it's, you know, a relatively smooth process within change because I'm open to it. I knew Adam loved change, but mm. he was always resisting it yeah, or always beating himself up for it yeah. or making himself wrong. And then I found that really frustrating to work within our relationship. Yeah. I feel, I feel that the same sort of feelings come up, like I'm, I'm ready for a change, a change is coming. And then I, my mind somehow tries to rationalize why it's not a good time or why that, that doesn't make sense or, and it gets in the way. Mm. So I think, um, and I was saying to you today as I was reading through it that um, I realized, you know, from when I was younger, there was a few times when parents or other people would say things like, if you change careers too many times, it's bad things, it's going to look bad on your resume or, mm. you know, and all those things obviously stuck with me. And now, you know, as an adult, you know, you can still be playing out those patterns of avoiding change because it's going to be perceived as a bad thing. So that was a big one for me to yeah. realize like it doesn't need to be a bad thing no because you know? my soul it just wants to create things all the time i've got all these ideas coming out all the time and i put yes. them on the back burner and i just forget about half of them which is yeah. probably the right thing to do yeah but some of them they stick around <laughs> yeah and i've had a couple of those recently that i've been shelving mm. and holding on to this current project that i'm working on i'm just <laughs> delaying and delaying and delaying but i think i just need to you know, yeah well it ends up yeah. causing more pain because like when you go against your soul, it's kind of like when you go against your values because, you, do you know what I mean? I, I often say to people like, you know, if you are unhappy, are you living in alignment with your values? And the soul awakening session helped us to even ask deeper, are we living in alignment with our soul? Mm -hmm. Are we honouring our way of being in the world or are we trying to match and belong the way we're supposed to be in the world? And really is that causing the stress and the conflict? And in our situation, and we see it in other couples, that forcing was causing conflict in our relationship. Um, because, you know, if you can't be yourself with yourself and you can't be yourself with your partner, you're always holding something back. Yes. You no, know, you're not always, you're not all in, you're not giving your whole heart you know, and, and it doesn't feel safe to love. So I think the soul awakening session really helped us feel safer in ourselves and who we are, and then learn how to create that safety in our relationship as a couple so that we could, you know, accept that that is who Adam is. He needs a lot of change and that that's okay. Um, you know, he doesn't finish everything. He starts a lot of things. He doesn't finish them. Mm -hmm. Um that used to be a little bit of a hard thing for me to, you know, I like to close the loop kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't, and just now we can laugh about it. We can bring humor. We can bring like a softness, a lightness, a compassion and empathy. 
that felt forced before mm. or, or was just even hard to find sometimes. I think it's really powerful, the work you do, Fiona. I think helping people tangibly reconnect to their soul. You know, sometimes it can seem so elusive and like mm. way out here or that someone else is doing it to me. And like, I have a great relationship with that. I, I've built that connection. I love like you talking about this stuff, like spending time with my own soul, going deep within myself. I love it. Mm. But I know the first time we had a cacao ceremony, um, this was about two years ago, we were having a really challenging time in our relationship. And I got the guidance to use cacao as a tool for us to reconnect on a deeper level because we weren't communicating. And Adam did it, but he was like, oh, this is just going to be like chocolate. Aston's crazy. Again, what is she even on about? Just like, you know, he completely blew it off, but at least was willing to give it a go. Um, and he had an incredible experience. And I felt intuitively in that moment to ask him what it meant to, to go inside and look at his soul. And, and maybe you can share, Adam, it wasn't a positive experience for him. And I think a lot yeah. of people have this. Well, it was my response was it was scary to go to the depths. I think that was the question. Yeah. What, I, does it, what does it feel like? Yeah, to go I said, to the what depths does it mean to, to go to the depths of yeah. yourself or, or look inside yourself? And for me, it was scary at that time. I didn't do a lot of, a lot of deep feeling, mm. a lot of thinking, but not a lot of feeling. Mm. So I, it was a scary thought to look at all those things that obviously I'd been resisting or suppressing or avoiding for many, many years. And, um, yeah, it really opened a door for me, I think, to yeah. start asking some new questions and to really dive into that. Yeah, and then Adam asked me what it meant mm. for me. And I said, well, honestly, it feels like coming home. It feels like the only place I'm fully accepted as myself, where I'm 100% worthy as I am. And it makes me emotional because there I feel no judgment. I feel yeah. fully loved, you know, and it's a love that, it's kind of like the unconditional love I, I would relate to having a child when you've had a child, kind of like that love, a love of, um, you know, I can see my good, my bad, my ugly and everything, but I can see it objectively and there's no shame, there's no blame, there's no rejection, there's there's this real acceptance and love. Mm. And I remember when I shared that with Adam, he was like, wow, I want to go there. I, I, where's that? I want to go there. That actually <laughs> makes me want to go there. Um, and that's kind of, we had a few more, we kept doing cacao ceremonies. And mm. then that's when we led to having the soul awakening session, because I really wanted to help Adam build a more positive relationship with going to his soul. And yeah, yeah I think, I think that's what your work does, Fiona. I think it really helps to build a more tangible, but also positive relationship um, with the soul. Mm. And that was definitely Adam's experience. Once he had it, it, it was like he owned it more, you know, yeah. owned his soul, owned his own experience more. Mm. And I think that's really powerful. Like when they say, you know, owning your own story, you know, is one of the most powerful things you can do or, or telling your story, really taking that ownership. It, it's really self-empowering. Oh, definitely. It's that coming home to yourself, mm. and, you know, truly understanding who you are so that you can show up in the world in the way that you're designed to show up rather than mm. rather than with the false expectations you've either placed on yourself or mm. other people have placed on you or society, you know, has placed on you. There was so much in there that yeah. you described I you know I feel very blessed to have had the opportunity to get that feedback from you because it's not always available to me yes. so it's yeah. lovely to yes. hear how these sessions have really touched your lives and supported your relationship oh. with each other Definitely. you know I think there's there's a few things that you said I hope I can remember them all to reflect on but um you know there's this Often in relationships, we build up so many expectations mm, yes. around our partners yes. uh, that are always based on our own expectations. Yes, mm. And they become false expectations most of the time because our partners are different to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we truly understand our partners and what drives them and what makes them up, what makes them tick and the little, intri you know, intricate little things that they're, that they, you know, that they hold as part of who they are, 
then we release those expectations mm. because we kind of expect them to show up as who they are, not who yes. we expect them to be. Yeah. So the, you know, the way that I see, first of all, these um, sessions really help yourself to understand yourself and therefore be, you know, committed to who you are and not who you're not, you know, mm. um, and understanding yourself, like you were saying, Adam, about the, you know, learning that communication and self-expression was so important to you and learning aspects like, you know, you're always going to be in the act of creation and always have these ideas and that's okay. You can let a hundred of them go because you're always going to be creating them. It doesn't okay. matter if you let some of them go they can't all stick because you wouldn't have time to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just knowing that that is who you are and these are the aspects of, of your soul. And as you said, you know, Aston, being um, a truth person, being driven by truth, so how important it is you for you to step into your truth. When we really know ourselves in this way and we start to align to that, Mm. that's when everything becomes better and easier and flows more in our lives and when we do that as a couple like you two have and I take my hat off to you that you went down that road Adam and you, you know you. Yeah. even though it was a little weird and wonderful to give it a go because you know what you've learned through that experience is that the information you get is is practical you can mm. you can logically work with it because mm it's practical guidance that you receive. So, you know, you've learned as a couple that these are tools that help you to create a better relationship with each other. And I think, you know, if we can all do that, I think it, we're in a, a good place. I know it made a big difference for my husband and myself when, when I actually started putting this work together and did that for us as well. Yes. We, you yeah. know, we, we learned so much about each other that really helped us to, you know, we've been married 30 years now. And, oh, and this would have been, You know, we'd have been married over 20 years when I actually did our, our reading for us. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just made such a difference to the way that we communicate with each other, to understanding each other's, you know, needs more. Yes. And, and yeah. also to give space around yes. the, you know, the parts of each other that, may feel very different to who you know we are ourselves but understanding them give allows us to give the space to that definitely I love yeah. to say it makes everything perfect but it doesn't do yeah. that well no. it does and if it, the, that's the thing that's even with the couples we work with it's it's yeah. life work like yeah. you know everything is comes back to relationships doesn't yes. everything everything Absolutely. everything comes back to relationships um mm -hmm you know, our relationship to ourself has an impact on to how we have relationship to others. And then our relationship to the world has an impact on that. It, everything, it's relationships within relationships. So I've always found it just so mind boggling that we don't have a class at school or that teaches relationships, you know, yes. um, that they don't get somebody in to help us realize because that it's such a big part of our lives. Yeah. you know with our with our partner with our kids yeah. with our workplaces it just it affects everything and um you know me and Adam had been together 16 yeah. years before we did the awakening soul awakening yeah. session and you know I I say this to couples all the time the length of time you're together isn't just enough I think the old old kind of um message of marriage was you get married you know, the marriage is a celebration. That's actually almost like the end, the wedding, when it's actually the beginning. Um, and there's no conversation about, just a minute, well, there's no conversation about constantly recreating your relationship. Because if you are going to be together for a long time, the person you married is not the person you're with five years later or even after kids or uh, you know, after challenges in life, we change, we all change so regularly. Well, um, yes. And, you know, especially if one person goes on any kind of inner growth journey, they're going yes. to change, um, yeah. you know, tremendously, and therefore the relationship will change. Yes. Because of 100%. that. And I think that's something to note about these sessions, too, because if, if you know, if you're working with couples, and 
one of the, the people in that relationship isn't open to yeah. having one of these sessions one person can still have a relationship reading 100%. the information that. that they receive will be a little bit different because yeah. not both people are present but they can still have a reading that helps them understand both themselves and their partner and then they can kind of adjust their you know their perception of themselves within the relationship and of their partners and that can bring a lot of healing Definitely. to the relationship without the other person even being involved I, in that process I cannot agree with that more and I absolutely love it because that's really how our process started um you know we'd been together a long time but I was always on this spiritual path and journey and Adam you know I'd say things like oh that's a sign I remember we bought our first apartment I was like that's the sign this is the one he was like can you stop with that like <laughs> don't let the agent hear that like he was so uncomfortable with it to see where he is now it, you know I crave this type of connection where um, you know not that he had to I never felt like he had to be me or be on the same path, but just that he would acknowledge that he had a spirit, you know, I think a lot, you know, it had a soul, had a spirit, whatever you want to call it, that we're more than just our physical body, that there is some guidance or wisdom or inner knowing that you have that if you trust it, it, it makes working together in a relationship a lot more loving and cohesive and, and it just, um, I, I always say it leads to creation, whereas when Adam and I are too much in our mind, it tends to lead to destruction in our relationship. If we communicate from the mind, we really try and teach couples to learn how to communicate from the heart. You know, you say things from the mind that you wouldn't say from the heart. Um, and it helped, it's always helped us come closer together and, and be able to speak tough things, but in a compassionate way or in a a, a way of neutral truth rather than from the ego so much charge of like I'm right you're wrong and that kind of thing mm. um but yeah we've this whole thing of like needing to we all need to change and, and I wanted Adam to be on the path but I wanted him to be on in his own way um but I had to go first and we attract a lot of women in relationships that want more in their relationships and and I believe that if you want more you actually need to bring more you need to be more like don't point the finger, take responsibility, empower yourself, like, like you say. And I love that you offer the sessions just for one of the couples as well, because we do the same. Um, and we do it because we've been living proof that one of you can start and the other one will come on board. So I started the journey and I didn't tell Adam about it, um, like he knew I was doing it, but I just started to be the change. Mm -hmm. I started to show up differently, like like you were saying. I showed up differently. I interacted differently. I held space for Adam differently. Um, I was more compassionate, more empathetic. And he couldn't help but see the changes. Yeah. He couldn't help but say, what's happened? <laughs> you seem really different. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't perfect at it because, like you said, nobody's perfect. There was messy changes sometimes. And sometimes I had to really awkwardly be like, okay, I'm trying to show up in a different way, but my old way is wanting to come through. So I'm just letting you know that I'm in this awkward stage at the moment. Um, but that was much better than just taking it out on him. Um, and then it didn't take long. Within a few months yeah. of seeing that change, Adam, it, what I always say to clients, I didn't have to tell Adam what he needed to work on. He could see it in himself. Mm. When I made the change, he could no longer point the finger at me. Yeah. He had to go, okay, maybe I do have a part in this because she's now lo no longer doing X, Y, and Z, which yeah. I was using as a reason for why I do X, Y, and Z. And she's yeah. not doing that now. So I now need to look at that in myself. And it was, I didn't even need to then go, you know, I'm right or none of that came up. It mm. was just, we got to this place where we actually went on this journey because we didn't know if our relationship had come to an end. We still loved each other, but didn't know how to be in love with each other. And this is, um, or how to relate that to each other. And this is where the soul awakening session really helped to open those doors for us. Um, but we ended up getting to this place once I made these changes that I said to Adam, you know, whether we stay together or not, I just deeply desire to experience the truest expression of my soul and I really want to invite you into experiencing the truest expression of your soul. 
And if it works out, I would love to experience that with you. Mm. That would be such a gift, such an honor, such a privilege mm. to do that with you. And that's really what then opened the door. We yeah. didn't know we would stay together. That was over two years ago. Mm. And we didn't know it would recreate our relationship and everything that would happen after that. Yeah, um, I felt a gap as well because you were growing so much. I felt the gap yes. widening yeah. and, and there was there was less and less to really relate to mm. because you were changing so rapidly. Growing. So. Yeah. I just, yeah, I'd made the decision that I needed to catch up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, well, you, you go one way or the other, don't you? You yeah, yeah. catch up or you, you just keep going in the other direction. But, you know, it is, it just proves that it's all about the inner work. So even yes. in relationship, it's the inner work that you each do uh -huh. that actually yeah. creates the, the, you know, the shift and the change within the relationship itself. And... You know, we have to be responsible and accountable to our own part of that. Yes. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, I know that my journey has been very similar to yours in, in my relationship too. You know, I went on the journey first and then my husband Clive came along. Yeah. As you said, Adam, it was like, well, you know, I remember him <laughs> saying to me one day, you've changed so much. And, and you know, not in a good way, he said yes. that. And, <laughs> yeah. and I was you know, thinking, oh, my God, you know, I have, I've changed a lot. I no longer am the person I was when we married. And, yes. you know, and that must be very difficult for him. But he made that choice. You know, you're yes. changing and I need to change too. So show me some of this stuff. You know, I'm yes. open yeah. to it. And, you know, our intuitive selves, our spiritual selves, whatever we want to call it, we can call it all sorts of weird and wonderful names. It's part of who we are. Yes. You know, it, it is a, a valid part of, you know, the souls that we are. And when we learn to connect to that part of ourselves, it's almost like we bring ourselves into wholeness. Yeah. It's when we push that part of ourselves away that we're always missing something. Mm. We're always missing a part of who we are. Yes. So just opening the door, even if it's just with curiosity, yes. to see what that is for yourself um I think is a is a good starting point you know just asking yourself the question well what is what is that maybe I can just explore that for myself and see what happens and, yeah, and yeah. then it doesn't seem such a scary or you know frightening thing because I think as you said earlier on Adam when you have those experiences in the beginning of realizing that there's depth to who we are and that can be a, a bit of a scary experience to sort of yeah. touch mm. the depths yeah. um you know it's also the place where we find our gold you know it's yes. we find our truth we find our real desires that's where all of that is often you know hidden away yes. yeah. underneath all of the you know the the sort of blocks or the things that are stopping mm. us from from seeing ourselves as who yeah we are. it's mm. under all that conditioning isn't it and yes like you said the expectation and all those layers of you know yeah. and it's really interesting you know we did this over t two years ago but we still refer back to it like mm. you know we didn't make all the changes at once and we didn't receive it and th and but like have this enlightening experience where like you know I think that's what people sometimes think they just wake up and I was completely different and <laughs> like you know yeah. that would be nice <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sun was yeah. shining up out of my bum like you know some ridiculous thing I think sometimes yeah. is what people yeah. think and it wasn't like that it mm. was subtle gentle changes and we're realizing that it's it's your soul and it's your life and it's your decisions and it's up to you what you do with this information and how deep you want to go with it and how you want to apply it to your life mm. or whether you want to um you're in control of it all um yeah. as we already are but we don't like to take responsibility for that because then what means we have to change it yeah. um yeah. but it is like you said extremely empowering when you do you know when I was just blaming Adam a couple of years ago for all the challenges in our relationship and yes he did he was responsible for some but when I did that I just became a victim I did mm. I wasn't able I felt helpless I wasn't able to move through my life I didn't know how to move forward there was no light it wasn't until I was able to take full responsibility mm. come back to myself and my part deepen my relationship with myself that I could then heal what was going on mm. in our relationship because I could show up differently and mm. I say this to couples all the time 
we make it so much harder than it needs to be. Like you probably feel the same looking back to your relationship before you started applying this work to your relationship. You you think, God, I was making it so much harder trying to make him who I expected him to be. And in doing that, I actually didn't like me or him. Absolutely. It was really, you know, it's often that thing of you think that's what you want until you get it and you realize actually that's not what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very much our experience. The more I tried to make him a certain way, the more frustrated, the more resistance, the more um, kind of separation. And um, mm-hmm. like you explained, it was like an inner split because Adam, we were both not being true to who we actually are. Um, and I think we had a bit of this fear and a lot of couples do that when you get into a relationship, you can't be your whole self. Like you were talking, you can't be your whole self. You know, in the beginning, we don't always bring our whole self, do we? We kind of hold our, you know, the dark stuff in the closet when we first meet and then it slowly comes out the longer we're together. So it can appear like we are changing. I mean, we are changing because we always are, but it was always there really. Mm these parts of ourselves that continue to come out were always there, were always part of our, part of us mm. and who we were going to become, mm. but we were hiding them or yeah. avoiding them. And, and that was definitely Adam's experience, not yeah. hi- like hiding some of these parts of himself, um, which actually meant I never felt I could fully reach him. Mm. Um, like there was a shield or we talk with clients, you know, taking the armor down taking the brick wall or the armor down so that you can actually reach each other on that soul level. But first, I think it's key, like you said, to feel that wholeness or safety in that wholeness in yourself to be able to then bring that to your partner Mm. Um, and know that you'll be loved in it because that's who you are um, is, is really powerful. But yeah, yeah, this change piece is really interesting because it does show up in, lots of relationships and it's in- inevitable because of course we can't be the same person that we were when we married it like yeah. we were 26 I mm. think 26 and 27 when we married and you know since then we've had kids and lived in a tiny house like we've done so many different things mm. we couldn't possibly be the same and if we're honest I wouldn't want to be the same no. I no. think I think it's an illusion from the ego Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we go into relationship with other people to grow. And, yes. Mm. And, you know, and hopefully we do that journey together. Yes. Um, but we're also doing it individually. Yes. And it's the key to doing it successfully together is communication mm. and understanding of who each other is yes. and allowing the space for each person to be who they are. as you grow and evolve together Um, and so uh, for me I've always felt that information knowing myself Mm. um, knowing my husband knowing who we are as people and what drives us it it's the the knowledge that we hold around that that is the Mm -hmm. key to the communication because we have learned how to communicate better with each other yes I'm driven by balance so, you know, everything has to feel kind of balanced for me. And yes. I hate imbalance and, you know, it drives me yeah. crazy. And I hate <laughs> arguing. It's like, oh, I just can't stand arguing. And, yeah. you know, and, and so the downside or the challenges of that is my tendency or has been in the past, my tendency to suppress my own emotions, mm. yeah. to keep yeah. the peace. You know, I just want everything. Yes. So I yeah. tuck it all away. That was my biggest challenge. So, yes. you know, in our relationship and, and Clive is like you, uh, Aston, he's truth. Yes. And, you know, truth can be very direct. And when it you're can. a balanced yeah. person, it's like, oh, my God, he's bombarding me with his truth. And yes. Yeah. Yes. it was yeah. very difficult. But what we've learned is to to give each other the space. Yes. Like me as a balanced person, when he has an issue, instead of bombarding it with me with it now he'll tell me what it is when you do that this is how I feel that's the way we communicate yeah. with yeah. each yeah. other now uh, which is healthier than accusing each other yes. of whatever yeah. it is uh, and then he knows he needs to give me space to go away and find my balance with it so I can come back and communicate from a balanced perspective of you know because he may have triggered me 
with what yeah. he said and I mm. might be in the emotion of it all. And if I respond at that point, it's not going to be a good response. So he yeah. he's learned to give me this space. So these are two, I think, key factors, the understanding and knowledge of each other and then how to communicate with each other based on who you are as as souls and how you communicate naturally. Oh, I Beautifully love said. that so much yeah. because that's exactly that's so true, we yeah. can relate, but yeah. in the opposites. So yeah. I'm very much like your husband and I had to yeah. learn. And luckily I had a son who's very much like me and I, I had to receive myself through him. And yeah. I, I remember saying to Adam one day, I understand it's a lot to receive me. <laughs> I was like, I remember saying yeah. to him, I just want to acknowledge you for being able to harness that power. Like, wow. <laughs> um, and that was a beautiful, humbling moment for me. I can mm. laugh at myself and not need to make myself wrong, but I can see that must be a lot to receive. And yeah. not just with my relationship with Adam, but any relationships, I'm more of a aware of that now. So like you said, I do the same. I now, I used to project because I didn't know how to own it in my body, but now it's more... I'm feeling this. I put my hand on my heart and I come back to me. This is what's going on for me. And it's all directed about this is me and my experience, mm -hmm. not you, you, you. Yes. And it really helps Adam to realize she's not shaming me. She's not saying I'm the problem. She's saying this is what it's bringing up for her. Um, and and then for me also, like you said, giving Adam space. I used to think that if he needed space, he didn't care. Mm. He didn't love me. He wanted to hurt me. Like my ego made all these stories. One of my wounding is reject, rejection and abandonment. So whenever he needed space, that's what was triggered. Um, and now I can see it from this place of love and compassion and the more I let him go and have the space what come what he brings to me when he comes back is I say to women all the time so worth the wait because there's this sense of like he's thought it through and he's understood his part he's he's mm. able to then reflect back to me that he understands how I feel because he's been able to go and like dissect it um and then can share it with me from a place where I just want to forgive him straight away I, I just want it to go away and 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 I just appreciate it so mm. much more. Whereas I used to in the moment be like, just say something. I need something back. Like, hello, I've just said all these things. Have you got nothing to say? And he's like, I really have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and truth people generally work very quickly. Very, you know, yes. and, you know, and they're very direct. And that yeah. can, can be a, a lot. balanced person. It can feel so overwhelming for other yeah. people. And I watch Clive, uh, bless him, I watch him sometimes when he's, you know, really in his stride and communicating yes. his truth. And I'm watching other people around him and I'm thinking, oh, my God, they're just not ready. They're not ready to hear that in that way. I'm sure that's what Adam thinks. And yeah. I'm sure that's what Adam thinks. And I'm sure Clyde can relate that I've said to Adam before, I don't plan to say those things. No. I know this mm. sounds so strange. Sometimes I observe myself and I'm like, I wish I could stop this. It's and it and I feel like I can't. Like there's something that is just like being pulled out of me, and it actually feels really uncomfortable when I try and stop it. And I'm yeah. sure Clyde feels the same. Um, yeah. But I have that. I have. There's definitely ways you can do it more empathetically, more compassionately, and that's what I've had to learn. Probably like your husband as well. That. Um, and the more I give it to myself, you know, listen to myself, hear my own truth, the less I need to be so projecting about mm. it. But it was also interesting you mentioned about being triggered because we had, Adam used to find me just so triggering, so yeah. threatening. I could, just anything I said would just like prod <laughs> Adam, you know. Um, and I do believe this is why we get into these relationships. I would never want to be in a relationship with myself. Like I can openly say to two of me, it would not be fun. It would not be beautiful. It would not be loving. Like I need the opposite energy um, yeah. because we often say like I'm my element would be fire and Adams is water. And I'm sure everyone has that, mm. um, you know, not just with your star signs, but in a feeling of what you're drawn to, you know, on yeah. a soul level. And I definitely need that opposite energy yeah. to, and it helps me grow. I think relationships are a spiritual initiation and, we, I have a relationship that trigger equals truth. And Adam 
has learned to adopt this, that not my truth, but when I bring my truth, it triggers something in him that he hasn't really looked at or has been avoiding. Um, but if I stand there poking that trigger, it's not helping him to explore it. If I just say what I need to and then give him space, he can actually explore it and then it's positive. Mm. Um, but that was really powerful for us learning that as yeah, well. But it was. but I do believe the positives come to uh, the opposites come together for a positive reason. Yeah. You know, I think that's what attracted us in the beginning. You know, when we oh. first meet each other, and then it's then what starts to frustrate us. Mm. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, so powerful. Wow. Well, I feel like I could just talk to you forever, um, but, I, <laughs> but we won't because I know your time's precious, but that was just so was beautiful. Awesome. And for someone, so just you. quickly, for someone who's curious Fee, about working with you and how they can work with you. Say hello. <laughs> there are the hello. one, Avin. Avin's come to say hi. Oh, hi. I know we spoke about it briefly before we started recording. Yes. Um, but how can they actually work with you? What are the options and and how do they how do they get in touch with you? So um, my my website is uh, Fiona at FionaWeatherhead.com. Okay. And, uh, the Akashic work that I do, not the, actually relationship reading, they're not even on my website, yes. uh, but the Soul Awakening sessions are on there. Yep. And mm. it's got my contact details. There's a form there they can fill in if they're interested. There's, a, there's actually a form for Soul Awakening. They can just fill that in and I'll get back to them and, Generally, with those sessions, if it's not something that um, someone has done before, I'll offer a sort of telephone call so we can talk through where they're at and and really see or feel into whether this is something that they feel that could help them. Could help them. So I offer that as a you know way of helping um, other people. And if if they are interested in relationship sessions, I can certainly give them more information about that, even though it's not on my website at the moment. amazing that's yeah, so exciting awesome. we're going to be doing that as yeah. well um i know fee said we don't need it i'm like i'm always like more 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 <laughs> we'll do it in a slightly different way for you i think yes yeah you, amazing yeah. i'm so excited awesome. but i'll get you to send me your links and then we'll put okay. the links below to make it easy for everybody but Honestly, after our experience, we cannot, we've recommended this to so many people. And even if you're not in a relationship, I would recommend this. So the Soul yeah. Awakening session, like we said, everything is relationship. So it helps you with your relationship to yourself. Um, like simply, I love to say, you'll have permission to be who you are. Yeah. You know, people always say, just be yourself, but then we don't know how to do it. Get a Soul Awakening session and then you will know. Exactly. Um, There's and, nothing more powerful, is there? To know so yourself, powerful. you know, more clearly. Yeah. It just affects every area of your life and it's it's really impacted both of our lives. Oh, it's time, been so. life-changing for us. We recommend it really highly and mm. we loved working with Fee. We're excited yeah. to work with Fee again. We just love the experience. And, yeah. yeah, two years later, we're still using it and yeah. it's still having an impact in our life. And Yeah. Um, and helping us so cannot recommend it enough and we're just so glad we got to share it with you all and um yeah we're just super happy that you've been here with us thank you so much yeah. thanks we so really much thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much thank you for having me